Hey guys, welcome to episode number 581. Today is Monday, so it's update Monday, and today we are spending some more time in and around the greenhouse. It is finally a nice day outside. It has been raining for like three weeks straight, and all of a sudden, the sun decided to come out. So, we've got a lot to accomplish around the greenhouse. We're gonna talk about our diatomaceous earth filter, where we're planning on putting that. We're gonna talk about our floating raft beds for our aquaponics system. And we're gonna take a look at all of the sprouts that we have going. They're about two inches tall now, and they're ready to start being pruned back. So we'll definitely tackle that as well. It's also about to get dark outside. So we're gonna have to turn some lights on inside the greenhouse. Luckily, we've got some lights to look at as well. So we can work in the greenhouse as late as we want. But before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you aren't subscribed already. And if you wanna help support this channel, you can always go check out myaquariumbox.com and bettaoasis.com for all of your bettas and live plants. All right, we've got a lot to do today. It is getting dark and I'm excited to show you the LED lights that I've installed in the greenhouse. So come along with me and learn how to be a better aquarist. All right guys, here we are outside the greenhouse next to the pond. And as you can see, we are refilling this pond. I'm just gonna throw that in there so it doesn't make too much noise while we're talking. But as you can see, I've dropped the water level down by about a foot. It's about two or 300 gallons. And what I used to dose is Seachem Safe. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I love Seachem Safe. It's the powdered version of Prime. And this is a quarter teaspoon. And one quarter teaspoon of Safe doses 300 gallons of water for chlorine and chloramine, which is exactly how much I'm refilling uh, this pond. So, a container this big goes a very, very long way, which is nice to see. All right, while we're out here, let's take a look at my diatomaceous earth filter. If you recall last week, we looked at this a little bit. It was located inside the greenhouse, and I was considering how I wanted to hook it up um, to help clean the water and get the algae out of the water. I was considering putting it over here, I was considering putting it over here, or maybe up high, not really sure. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized I don't really have the space inside the greenhouse for a filter of this size. I only have about 16 inches of space here uh, for filtration at the very end. So everything is very compact, and this thing is not very compact, especially with the handle sticking out the side and the fact that we need to have pipes going in basically both sides. So this is what I was thinking. Maybe I have the diatomaceous earth filter located outside. This thing has no moving parts. It's not powered in any way, and it can get wet. I mean, it's meant to be used for pools and it can live, and it's designed to live, outside uh, UV rated plastic, all that. So I'm thinking putting it here is probably going to be the best solution. I do have some extra bricks, so I could put a couple bricks over here to help level it out. And what I'm planning on doing is disconnecting my black tubing over here, which runs the giant spray bar manifold, and pulling that back through underground um, where I dug it through, which is the same spot that this two inch overflow is dug underground here and pull it back out outside the greenhouse. Then what I can do is connect that to the bottom port here, which is the inlet for the diatomaceous earth filter. This filter fills completely up with water. The water pressure from the pump is doing all of the work in here. There's no moving parts inside this filter at all. And then, as you saw last week, all of those fingers that are uh, located inside that filter are going to get coated with a diatomaceous earth. And then only the clean water, minus the algae, is going to pass through up and out this port on the top. 
and then I'll probably have to just run that back underground and then send that line back up to our manifold, which is easy enough to accomplish. The only other feature that this filter has is um, a, like a pressure release or a bypass um, handle. And whenever I see that the pressure is getting too high inside this canister filter, uh, diatomaceous earth filter, it means that all of those fingers are just plugged up with algae and other debris and junk. And uh, hopefully, the good part is that will eliminate a lot of the sedimentation inside the bottom of all of these tubs. The bad part is that's going to get coated on the inside of this filter. But what I can do is just pull that handle and what it will do is instead of sending the water uh, out the top and to my greenhouse, it'll send it out the bottom port here, which I'll probably run underground and I'll just send it off into the bushes and into the trees. So that'll be my wastewater uh, overflow uh, or bypass. So that will help keep the filter clean and running. I suspect every once in a while, I'll probably have to take these big uh, black clamps off the side, pull the whole thing apart, spray it down real good, recharge it with new diatomaceous earth, and then uh, let it continue to go. But that is the current thought for the diatomaceous earth filter out here, outdoors. I think it'll work pretty well. I mean, it's not exactly uh, pleasant to look at in the grand scheme of things, but I could put a few more plantings around it and uh, I don't know, it is a functional space after all, so we'll see. But that is the plan for the diatomaceous earth filter. While we still have a little sunlight left, let's go take a look at the LED lights that are now hooked up inside the greenhouse. All right, the inside of the greenhouse is a little bit of a mess today, but we've been working on projects and we'll certainly talk about all of them. But for right now, let's focus on the ceiling. I'm super pumped to get these LED lights installed in the greenhouse. It means that I can spend all night out here working on projects if I want to, which is awesome. Usually I just have to go in when it gets dark out and uh, I usually work late. So having these in here is gonna be great. Now, you can see we've got one, two, three, four LED lights and they're all basically daisy chain connected to one another, which is a feature of this LED light. We've got our uh, watertight seal more or less over here <laughs> for right now. We still have to work on the electrical, big, big time. But for right now, we've got our uh, electrical here and uh, that leads up to our switch, which we can turn these LEDs on and off. And so the power starts here and then it links to this one over here and then it links to this one here and then it links to the final one here. And these are the um, moisture resistant LED strip lights, four foot strip lights that you can find at uh, most big box stores. Uh, there are a few different variations. These ones uh, are pretty simple. And uh, yeah, I think they'll hold up pretty well out here. Uh, what I did go ahead and do on the top side of these was just use some duct tape to tape over any of the holes that were present on the top of these lights. Usually they're a little knockout panels and things like that to connect your lights directly to the ceiling. I made sure to tape all of those and then I just zip tied them uh, up to the ceiling for now. And uh, I think what that will allow me to do is keep most of the moisture on the outside of these lights and then um, allow them to function <laughs> without getting wet. Uh, it is kind of wet on the inside of the greenhouse. You can see there's condensation basically everywhere. Uh, it has been raining for the past three weeks. It's been really cold out at night and then pretty humid during the days. So uh, it'll be a real test to see if these can actually hold up over time or if they're just gonna short out. But for now, they look like they're working. 
Um, we've got the wires that sort of daisy chain these together so I can power all of them from one power source which is really nice and yeah I think it adds quite a bit of light to the inside of this greenhouse. We will certainly take a look at how much light it throws off once it gets dark out because we're going to be working kind of late out here and uh, we'll put these lights to the test for real. But for right now, it's adding a little extra light here uh, out in the greenhouse considering it is starting to get dark. Now, let's take a look at some of the plants real quick. We'll come back to these in a little while uh, and probably prune these back a little bit. But we've got our tomatoes. These are the yellow tomatoes. We've got uh, some basil here. It's nice to see that the basil is starting to come in. It's a little bit slower. We got some red cherry tomatoes, some more yellow tomatoes. All the tomatoes look like they're about the same size. And as you can see, we've got eh, like three or four stalks in each one of these rock wool cubes. And the goal here, um, once they put off a second set of leaves, is to trim back all of the slow growers. Uh, what we want to do is just pick the one healthiest, strongest, growing plant in each one of these little rock wool holes and snip all of the rest of them back. Uh, that way we can allow that one plant to get as much nutrients as it can and to grow uh, as big as possible. And once we see that it's got four leaves on it, that's when we'll cut them back and then transfer them over into the styrofoam rafts. We'll get to this in a minute. All right, lettuce is doing really good. This entire tray is lettuce and uh, we've got quite a bit of it. Um, people are saying this is very leggy lettuce, very tall lettuce. Um, I agree with that. The first couple weeks that I had this started was inside in the basement. It was just way too cold and rainy out here to put it out in the greenhouse. We actually had a frost warning um, like right after I planted these so I couldn't put them outside. Uh, under natural light and they didn't get enough light uh, early on so if I was to redo this I would probably put a grow light right over it to give it uh, a better head start and I might actually put like a fan blowing across them a little bit not too rough but enough uh, to keep them smaller lower um, instead of just growing sort of wild and out of control so I don't know how well these are gonna do uh, it's gonna be kind of difficult to cut these back but we'll see what comes of them I may need to replant them um, lettuce does well in cooler temperatures anyways so if this crop doesn't work out uh, I'll try it again uh, towards the fall and see if I can get some uh, then all right what else we have here we got some hot peppers on the end here these are the ones I really wanted to see come in because I really want to experiment with hot peppers and you can see we have a little bit of activity down there it looks like we might have some roots poking through the seeds so the hot peppers may in fact come in the cilantro here uh, looks like it's really slow but it is coming in as well uh, sort of similar to the basil in terms of its growth just a little bit slower and we got some more cherry tomatoes here and we got some rosemary and again the rosemary looks like it's just starting to come in here uh, on the end it's a little bit slower probably the slowest of the herbs that I can see um, so that's that we've got three full trays of plants hopefully um, they grow strong enough to transplant into these rafts which we'll talk about in just a second but let's head over here and talk about the rest of these plants we've got a lot of terrestrial plants um, with dirt here these have not come in yet I'm not sure if I over watered these to begin with if it doesn't have enough drainage or if I just need to be a little bit more patient but it's been a week since I planted these haven't seen any activity I wouldn't be surprised if it takes at least another week or two uh, given the temperatures for these things to start to come in. I have not covered them, which may help, but it has been pretty humid in here as well. So we'll see how that all turns out. And uh, same story with these guys over here uh, in the pots. Down here, we have some string beans or green beans. And these, I'm actually really excited to see growth on. 
I wasn't sure if these were going to do well, considering the tops of the seeds are poking out of the rock wool. But as you can see, we got a lot of roots sticking down into the rock wool. So we may in fact have a few of these make it. And the question is just going to be, uh, are the roots going to be the right type of roots to survive in a deep water culture system? I don't know. I've never tried beans before, but we're going to give it a go and see what happens. All right. Now, with all of that said, we're probably going to wait another week before we start transplanting some of these rock wool cubes into our deep water culture styrofoam rafts. But I thought it would be good to prepare at least three of these tubs here to accept those plant seedlings um, so they're just ready to go. Whenever the plants are ready, the rafts will be ready. So all three of these tanks have been emptied of all plants. There's no fish, there's no anything in these except for water. And um, what I did was I cut these styrofoam sheets to size. Uh, I rounded the corner in the front so that they get uh, a good fit. And we've got two sheets of styrofoam plus like a little spacer piece in the back just to keep the styrofoam uh, in place. And I think that's gonna work out really well. We've got our inflow of water here. We've got our overflow of water over here. And both of those have plenty of safe space so that the roots and plants and stuff stay away from them uh, as they're growing. So with all of that said, we have a bunch of net pots. And when I picked these up, I picked up two sizes. This is a three inch net pot. And as you would expect, what you need for that is a three inch hole saw. So I have one of those and uh, it turns out that works pretty well to uh, put that net pot into the raft. So I've got to drill a bunch of holes in these rafts to accept these net pots. Now I got two sizes of net pots. These are the three inch and this is a two inch. The two inch is actually a lot smaller than the three inch. Um, and I think what I'm gonna do is actually start with the two inch net pots. I may move up to the three inch depending on how big the plants get and uh, what their needs are, like how, how far they need to be spaced apart. But I think what I'm gonna do is start with the two inch net pots and then I may need to make some more styrofoam rafts uh, for the three inch net pots later on and just switch them out. But the weird thing is the two inch net pot uh, actually requires an inch and three quarter uh, bit to get a nice snug hole uh, to sink that net pot into so that it doesn't uh, bounce around too much and so it sits nice and flush uh, on the styrofoam raft. This is styrofoam that I had laying around. I've seen a lot of other people use the blue type of styrofoam which uh, sort of skeeves me out a little bit. Uh, I know this stuff is inert I know a lot of people use this uh, in and around aquariums. I know I've used this stuff on a lot of projects. Uh, and this is the stuff I had laying around. So I just decided to go with this. Um, there's probably nothing wrong with the blue stuff or the pink stuff, but I'm not really an expert in that uh, category. So if you know more about the different types of styrofoam and what's uh, best to use, what lasts the longest, what's the safest, uh, what doesn't give off any nasty chemicals and whatnot, let me know down in the comments uh, so everyone else can learn as well. Anyways, these are the three rafts. We've cut all of the styrofoam to size. All we need to do now is cut the holes in the rafts so we're ready for our seedlings. So let's do that now.
Alright guys, and here is the finished product. We have one deep water culture bed wrapped, completely drilled and filled with net pots. These are the two inch net pots and I spaced them about three inches apart and uh, I think that's plenty of space for plants that this size. Um, now, as I said before, I'll probably need to bump up to the three inch net pots at some point and I think the plan is to use the rock wool um, combined with hydrogen um, which is the expanded clay media or maybe just use only the expanded clay media in these pots we'll have to see but right away uh, I can see a couple problems with this white styrofoam uh, for one I think once this is completely full of plants you can imagine like lettuce growing out of each one of these uh, I think it's gonna be pretty heavy and this styrofoam isn't super thick and I can definitely see uh, a piece of styrofoam like this snapping if it was completely full of heavy plants so that might be uh, a downside to using this styrofoam over the blue stuff uh, another thing I'm a little concerned about is the amount of air space that I have or lack of air space if we zoom way in on one of these pots you can see the water level inside of these and as this piece of styrofoam gets weighed down with plants the water is going to come almost all the way up to the top of these net pots and what that means is that the roots to these plants they're going to be completely submerged and I know a lot of these plants actually need some air um, so that some of the roots can grow in air and some can grow submerged under water otherwise you can get root rot in some of your plants so uh, I think that's less important with lettuce but it is more important with some other plants but we'll have to keep an eye on that and uh, see if that's the case and ultimately we may need to switch over to a thicker blue styrofoam that's going to be more buoyant and allow us to have that airspace that we need um, maybe even be a little bit more rugged too so I can pick up a whole raft and uh, carry it around but those are my initial impressions here of using this thin white styrofoam again this is the stuff I had laying around so I figured I'd give this a shot before I went and bought anything else the only other thing I would note is I think I could do a better job at my spacing of my holes if this was one solid sheet of styrofoam as opposed to two sheets um, it would allow me to get you know one dimension for width and one dimension for length and then equally space all of the holes across the whole surface there is some wasted space in the middle and uh, towards the ends because everything isn't you know completely uh, square and level and uh, even so that's just a a problem with having two sheets as opposed to one sheet of styrofoam I think but the actual cutting of the holes was pretty easy uh, all I did was I marked out all of the locations for my holes and then I used my um, uh, hole saw here without even attaching it to the drill and you can just sort of make your own hole by um, twisting the hole saw with the, uh, the pilot bit in the middle that worked pretty well except I had to eject the piece of styrofoam in the core of the hole saw after every hole uh, which got a little tiresome but it did work and I think it worked pretty well so this is our raft for now uh, again we're gonna let these plants grow for at least another week until they get another set of leaves on them before we start to transplant them and I think we're gonna transplant them over the next few weeks depending on their level of growth uh, I think the lettuce and these tomatoes are going to be first to go in these rafts. So that's what I have here is just a trial plant. Uh, this is a cherry tomato, a yellow cherry tomato. And you'll notice I selected just one plant for this rock wool cube. So hopefully he makes it. And then we've got a lettuce over here. And actually I cut about half of the stems out of this piece of lettuce. Uh, I'm going to let the remainder of these grow for the next few days until 
I get a second set of leaves before I cut some more back. Um, I may leave a couple in there and uh, we'll see how that goes as well. If none of this works out, we've got plenty of time to uh, reset and try again. But for now, uh, this is the learning process and we've got a bunch of stuff that we're testing out just to see what works and uh, what's going to be the best bet for the long term. So before I cut more holes in more styrofoam, I wanna see how well this styrofoam tray works out with some of these first plants that are gonna go in these uh, rafts. And I may need to go out and buy larger sheets of the blue styrofoam uh, as a result. If you have that suggestion for me, definitely leave it down in the comments below and uh, I'll take that into consideration as we move forward on this project. But this is a look at the raft system and the growth of the plants. Let's head outside and tell a little story. All right, guys, it's dark out. <laughs> it's nighttime and it's getting a little chilly out. But we're almost done refilling the pond. And while I'm waiting for that to happen, I thought I'd tell a little story. So this weekend I went on a frog hunt. I was reminded of this this morning because uh, I actually found a frog in my pond. It's a little wood frog. Uh, they hop around the woods all over the place back here. And every once in a while one jumps in the pond. Usually I just take my net, scoop it out, and uh, put it back in the woods. Um, he was fine. He went off on his way. But it reminded me that this weekend I went on a little adventure. So I thought I'd tell you the guys the story real quick. Um, one of my goals this year is to get outside more and to explore more. And one thing that I wanted to do this year was collect frog eggs. Uh, I used to do this all the time growing up in Maine. Um, there'd be little, you know, drainage ditches all over the place, vernal pools, really cool areas. Um, if you watch my video from last fall when I went back home, um, a lot of that area that got clear cut down in the woods uh, where I used to live that was all like vernal pool type areas and unfortunately a lot of that got disrupted uh, by the logging that happened in that area now I know there are certain restrictions you have to stay a certain number of feet away from um, you know wet areas wetlands uh, but still a lot of that got impacted and it is sad to see but regardless growing up I had vernal pools and drainage ditches and stuff all over the place um, and I knew where to catch everything. Frogs, turtles, snakes, you name it. Uh, I could just go out in the woods and catch all of that stuff. And so far, um, living in Massachusetts, I haven't really had the time or the desire or the need to go looking for this stuff. So it's funny that I've been here, I've lived here for like 10 years, but I don't know where to get frog eggs in the wild, which is crazy. Uh, 10 year old Greg would be so upset at uh, 33 year old Greg. But uh, I spent, you know, probably two or three hours driving around uh, over the weekend with my waders on and a net and a bucket uh, looking for bodies of water that might have frog eggs. Now, we've got a lot of frogs in the area. We've got wood frogs. We've got uh, like leopard or pickerel frogs. We've got green frogs. We've got bull frogs. We've got tree frogs. Uh, a lot of different frogs and they all lay their eggs at different times. And I was hoping to catch some of the uh, wood frog eggs. They seem like they're a good species to raise up and uh, release into the woods as opposed to into like a giant body of water. And I thought that would be a cool little experiment to document the eggs uh, growing up, metamorphosizing into little froglets and then letting them go. Unfortunately, I got completely skunked this weekend. I went to some large uh, ponds 
that uh, were just way too big and probably had way too many fish in them. Um, so frogs don't like areas like that. I went to some areas that had streams uh, of really fast moving water. And again, frogs don't really like that. It's been raining really heavily. So especially those areas were just like really flooded and the water was moving way too fast. So frogs don't hang out in areas like that. And I realized that I didn't know where the vernal pools were in my area. So I'm gonna do some researching and hopefully within that, in the next few weeks, I can go out and collect some frog eggs if I'm not too late. If you guys have never visited a vernal pool, it's a really cool phenomenon that happens uh, during the springtime when it's very rainy, like it has been. And it's an area like a depression that just stays wet. Uh, the water just hangs out there for months at a time. And then once you hit like the high peak of summer, it usually dries out completely. And um, you know, then in the, in the springtime again, the waters return and so do the frogs and the eggs and everything else. Uh, it's cool because it's an area that is completely safe from predation. Um, all the big fish hang out in large bodies of water and so they're not gonna be present in these little puddles and pools and drainage ditches and vernal pools and stuff. So um, that's what I'm gonna have to try to find. I'm gonna have to try to find vernal pools in my area and hopefully I'm not too late to catch some frog eggs. If I manage to do that, I will put them probably inside the greenhouse uh, in one of the bins and watch them develop over time, feed them some lettuce and other vegetable matter as they grow. Uh, and then once they metamorphosize into froglets, let them go. Anyways, that's the plan. That's the adventure that I want to take you guys along on. Uh, and if I'm ever successful in finding them, I definitely will take you along for that journey. But until then, we'll keep hunting. If you have any suggestions on areas you think I should visit this spring and summer for outdoor adventures, whether it's places to catch fish or frogs or turtles or anything else uh, in the New England or Massachusetts area, let me know because I'm looking to explore and I definitely want to bring you guys along. Anyways, that's the little story. I think our pool is full of water, so we're going to pack everything up and head inside. All right guys, and that's gonna do it for this week's video. 
we had some fun outside in the greenhouse. We've got a lot of plans going on and hopefully we can get these plants planted and get this water in the greenhouse cleared up. I'm really excited that these LED lights are installed because we can hang out real late out here in the greenhouse. I actually think it would be pretty cool to host a live stream from out here at some point this spring or summer. Let me know if you're interested in that. In any case, we're going to let these plants grow for probably another week before we transfer them into these rafts and continue this journey with aquaponics. We also have an exciting announcement in the realm of fish. We've decided on the Shabunkin goldfish, the Calico goldfish, um, to be housed outside in that thousand gallon pond. So I have ordered those and within the next few weeks they should be arriving. I think I got 50 fish which uh, I think they're only two or three inches to start, but they grow big and they grow fast. So hopefully uh, I'll be able to grow those to a nice big size and uh, maybe uh, trade those and give a few of those away and then let the rest settle down for the winter. Anyways, we've got a lot more to do out here. As you can see, it's constant projects and constant improvements. We also have a lot to accomplish inside breaking down that fish room and rebuilding it as the 50 gallon Zoomed Glow Boy fish room. We'll tackle all of that stuff and a whole lot more in future videos. I also want to get the electrical out here finalized, get a trench dug, get a wire put underground so that we have a safe and reliable source of electricity out here in the greenhouse all of the months of the year, which is gonna be really important before we head into the cooler months. So we've got plenty to accomplish and we will tackle all of that in future videos. As always, if you like this content, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And also go check out myaquariumbox.com and bettaoasis.com if you wanna help support this channel. Anyways, guys, that's all I've got for you for this week. Stay tuned for next week. We've got a lot more to do out here. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.